Hey guys, welcome to another IP camera video. This time, for a change, we aren't looking at a 4K 8 megapixel model. When using an IP camera, you have two scenarios where you want it to work during the day and during the night. Most often, daytime isn't much of a problem plenty of light available, and even cheaper cameras can handle that without much of an issue. Night is where the difference is. In regards to IP cameras, do you go with a relatively low resolution, low light camera to make the most of the light available? Or do you add lots of light or IR light so you can use a high resolution camera? Well, a new generation of cameras might bring a change to having to decide that. Let's see if this DH IPC HDW 544T TM AS LED can actually see in the dark. Just a quick note to start off with since these videos often turn out pretty long, if you'd like to jump through the video to certain parts, I will have jump links in the video description so you can use those to go to the part you'd want to watch. You'll also find affiliated purchasing links there to the cameras shown in this video. If you decide to use one of those, thank you very much. It really helps me, well, testing all these cameras. Now, back to the light, or well, talking about light. Traditionally, you've always had two choices for a nighttime scenario. As I started out, you can either get a camera that is very light sensitive and use what light that is available to make the picture, or you can add light to the scene in the form of a normal white light to get a good image with a higher resolution camera. The reason for this is because of the camera sensor size. If it's about the same in both cameras, the higher megapixel camera has to cram more pixels in the same space than the low megapixel camera, which automatically means that each pixel receives less light. In regards to adding light, what is most often used is adding light in the form of infrared or IR light. This is mostly invisible to the human eyes, so the scene appears dark for our eyes, but on camera the image can be clearly seen. This however has a few downsides. And the biggest one is obviously, well, the loss of color you can't identify the color of a car or a jacket anymore. Another issue on the cheaper models is that a lens can suffer from being only sharp during the day or night, so you can't get both sharp at the same time, or well, at the right times. But this is mostly an issue with cheaper cameras. For instance, on most models I've recommended, such as the HDW 5831R Old Champ, or more recent, the HDW2831T, that isn't really an issue because the lens used is of high enough quality to not have this issue. Oh yeah, small update on the HDW2831T. It turns out the VBR, or variable bitrate codec, of the SOC is most likely a bit buggy, or just not very good at all. After the review, I noticed that setting the camera to CBR, or constant bitrate, with the same bitrate as I had in VBR, cleaned up the image quite a bit and there were no more compression artifacts visible. It also helped the picture keeping more detail even in busy situations, like the outside sunshot where it failed horribly before. The conclusion from the review is still valid in my opinion, the old Champ HDW 5831R still provides the best image quality in most scenarios, but with the compression issues fixed, the newer and much cheaper HDW2831T certainly comes a lot closer. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it over here or find the link in the description. But right, back to cameras and light. Generally, I have no issue with IR light for my cameras, but newer options have become available in the low light department that make them a much better option to consider now. In past generations, low light cameras were all limited to two megapixel to keep individual pixel size as big as possible. Compared to eight megapixel, however, that wasn't too big of a trade-off for me during anything but, well, maybe a low light situation. And since you generally still need IR, even with those low light models, 
I didn't really see the point. A 4K 8 megapixel camera out during the day or any situation where there is decent light is so much better than a 2 megapixel camera and in total or near dark scenarios the low light camera switches to IR anyways so yeah I didn't see the point. But a new generation of decently priced low light capable cameras has become available. That might change this outlook a little bit or at least present a different option. Today we're going to take a look at, as I, as I mentioned, the Dhawa DH-IPC HDW5442 TM AS LED. This camera generally costs about 150 bucks, and for that you get an all metal, 4 megapixel, 30 frames per second camera, which has a giant 1 by 1 8 inch sensor, giving it a very big individual pixel size to soak up all the light. Dawa combines it with a f1.6 2.8 mm lens, making sure it can get as much as light possible to the sensor. It also has a microphone built in and is capable of certain AR features and writing footage to an internal SD card. But that isn't really the subject of the video today. I will be using this camera combined with my NX Witness NVR software, and I also wanted to remark that using the web interface, which requires no plugin, is nice and snappy. Further, the camera can be powered by a 12 volt 1 amp power adapter or using PUE, where it uses about a max of 7 watt that I measured with the LED lights on. Now, there are several variants of this camera, and as I mentioned before, I didn't really understand using IR with low light sensitive cameras, because then I'd much rather use a 4K 8 megapixel variant if I have to use IR anyway. But this new HDW5442 camera is also available with two warm white LEDs built in. Now that's an interesting combination. Low light cameras are good in scenarios where there is at least a bit of light available, and with the camera being able to provide this itself, that could make it quite the self-contained solution. Unlike what a lot of people would want you to believe, these cameras, even if it's this Dahua full color dark or the, the Hikvision dark fighter, etc., still can see in the dark. Yes, there are cameras that can show you a great picture with just the light of the moon, but then you will also need a budget reaching to the moon too. So yeah, this camera having built in warm white LED lights should make it perfect in spots where there is too little light normally but you do want color nighttime footage. These LEDs aren't motion activated. They are meant to either be on or off in a nighttime scenario. They do have a day night sensor so that the LEDs aren't on during the day. And they also have an auto brightness adjustment to try and provide as much light as is needed for the current scenario. But how well does this work? Well, let's quickly test this in my office. Well, <laughs> my garage office, I guess. Here I have everything hooked up to Home Assistant using my own Quinn LED controllers, so I have perfect control over all the lights. And let's compare it to my old champ, the HDW5831R, and well, my, uh, my Panasonic G7, which is a micro four-third camera we're watching right now. I'm locking down the HDW5831R to these settings, which in my opinion provide the best possible footage especially at night. The thing to note is that I forced it into color mode without IR, since that is what we're trying to compare. And, well, for my G7, I've locked it to settings of an aperture of 2.2, ISO 400 with a shutter speed of 1 60th. The new HDW5422 is however set to all auto, because during testing I found that it provides the best image possible, and I was not able to get it to display a better picture with manual settings. The only thing that I've changed is that I've turned off the built-in LED lights, and the, except for the test where we're going to test that separately. Okay, let's do some office shots. As said, we have the HDW5831R, we have the new HDW5442, and then we have my Panasonic G7 camera. Um, we're currently in my uh, profile, which sets uh, up my lights for my video production. Let's first turn off the uh, RGB lights and also this one. Eh, shouldn't make too much of a difference. Doesn't look as nice on the camera, but you know. Okay, let's put everything to 
So that actually raises the light output. And uh, well, these are 28.8 uh, watt per meter LED strip. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really bright. So let's quickly go to 50%. Okay, so in regards to light output, that's a whole lot less because light doesn't really scale linearly. Um, but yeah, that's still looking pretty, pretty good on all cameras, except for my, my, my mirrorless, uh, micro for a third camera actually, because, well, it's all set to manual. So if I don't have the lights turned on that I normally use with that, well, it, uh, it doesn't look right. Okay. Let's go from 50% to 25%. And here we can clearly start seeing a little difference. Um, the clicking you hear, by the way, is different cameras in here, which do spew out IR, but IR is disabled on these cameras, so you won't be able to see that and it doesn't influence the picture. Um, but you can clearly see that the new 5442 camera is keeping a nice and bright image while my, well, my, my mirrorless camera is almost black and the old champ, well, it's trying to produce an image especially if we look at, uh, you know, moving stuff. Yeah, it's certainly uh, starting to show its downsides, I think, or in, in regards to low light capabilities. Let's go to the lowest setting I programmed, which is basically around 10%. Okay, so now we're about down to 10%, which, well, <laughs> according to my mirrorless camera, is almost no light whatsoever. Um, uh, in reality, it's barely visible. It's way, it's no way enough to, for instance, read with or something like that. And, um, well, it seems that the low light camera is definitely producing an image, which actually looks brighter on screen than it is in reality for me. And I think even, um, well, let's turn everything off. Okay. Now all artificial lights in the, uh, in the room are off except for, well, my screen here, which I'm using and actually my keyboard. So let me unplug my keyboard and well, you can hear that, that actually makes a visible difference to the amount of light that this camera can use to present its image. So it is really light sensitive. And although it has a little bit less detail, well, this is just the light from this, this tiny screen over here. And I can, I can, I don't know, make it more black. There we go. So now it's even providing even less light because most of the screen is now black. So there's almost no light in here. I, I, I trip over things. That's how little light there is over here. And even the light that comes off of my, uh, microphone, which is just some dim LEDs. You've probably seen those before in different videos. Look at how much light the camera extracts from that. That is awesome. Okay. So to prove this is actually happening, let's go back to my normal, uh, let's call it teleprompter mode. Ugh. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're back. Okay. Well, my, uh, my mirrorless camera is back to looking normal and, uh, well, both cameras now look fine since there's enough light. Wait, I forgot to do a test. Uh, so let's do that. Let's turn off all the lights again. Yep, that's dark. And let's turn on the internal LED lights. So currently this is just the light from the screen and my keyboard again. Let's save this to auto. Is that, oh, okay. There he goes. <laughs> Took a little bit to kick in. And well, now you can see uh, the scene of all cameras lit by the internal warm white LED lights just of the camera. And as you can see, actually for the HDW 5831R, the old champ, well, that really helps, but it's still a bit uh, smudgy and stuff like that. And if you look at the image, well, I'm blown out because I'm a singular subject and camera IP cameras aren't, aren't really meant for that. Um, but the whole rest of the room and my movement. And if I like uh, put this in front of my face, you see it changing the in, uh, LED light intensity. Oh, and it actually turned it off now because it's, oh, it's like, oh, this is enough light. But if I move these away, it's like, oh, okay, I need to turn up the gain. Let's turn on those LED lights again. So that auto light feature, because if I move this closer, it actually dims the lights. Yeah, 
it seems to be working well. But if you look in the room, for a normal room size, as I said, these LED lights certainly provide enough light to make the image very visible, and there's no real smudging or stuff like that anymore. So, let's uh, continue with the rest of the video. Before we head to the real conclusion, I had this camera running along in all shots I did of my previous review of the HDW uh, 2831T. So let's compare it, set to full color mode mostly, to the other cameras in those situations. Let's quickly take a look at those to compare. Thank you. 
As you can see in those comparison shots, having warm white LEDs included really makes a big difference. And now you can place these cameras in a spot where it's normally too dark, but you also don't want IR. I'd say the LEDs provide enough light for up to 15 meters of distance, which is pretty good. So, conclusion time. No, even a reasonably priced $150 special low light camera cannot yet truly see in the dark without IR. A low light camera needs a bit of light to work with, but it doesn't have to be too much. A floodlight in your yard, or maybe a street light further down the street, could provide enough light to make it a viable option in those locations. The same goes for using it with some dim lights when you're using it inside your home. This special LED version is basically a decent resolution camera with a built-in spotlight, potentially replacing two devices at the same time. Perfect for in that dark alleyway you wanted to light anyway. Now that these type of special low light cameras are 4 megapixel and not limited to just 2 megapixel anymore, the trade off in daytime image quality has become much less than it was before. It actually produces a very nice and detailed image during the day, so the Hua certainly picked an overall high quality image sensor for this one, in my opinion. So, what would I recommend? Well, over the past few years, I've been stuck, st stuck with my old champ because it just provided the overall best package in my opinion. And as I said, I can work with IR light in most situations. But this new HDW 544T offers an interesting new choice. If you have the need for full color nighttime footage for just $150, this is definitely the camera to get. The amount of detail the camera is able to put in the video with just a little bit of light is amazing and it's actually better than what the human eye can see in my opinion. So that's, that's a real feat to accomplish. And this makes it the perfect camera for situations where keeping color, even at night, is desired. And with the LED version of this camera, it can even add that bit of light itself. So while, in my opinion, it doesn't dethrone the old champ, it does comfortably sit beside it as being a very good camera uniquely suited for certain applications where it will do really well, both during day and nighttime scenarios. And well, that's it for this review. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are and where you might think this camera is a good fit. Again, if you're looking to pick one up or any camera we talked about today, using the links in the video description really helps me out providing you these reviews. Next up, I'm going to do a comparison of a few lower budget model cameras to see what are good options out there, and if you should buy one of those hacked Chinese models or should stick to the official models. Make sure to subscribe for that, and well, I hope to see you back then. Bye bye.